identify with. But there could be even more out there and with an ever-growing community in years to come, there could be double. Oh, they'll be double in way, way more than that. Uh, once people really start not running from sex and they kind of come out with, well, you know, get rid of that old <gasps> sex. <gasps> no, we, we can't talk about it. We can't think about it. We That's a sin and you're a sinner. And um, like I said, genius, pure genius for them to do that. As that stops being the case, and people can talk about it openly, and the more enlightened vibrations come out, there'll be a lot more talk about it. And um, it'll be a lot more fun, too. Uh, definitely. It's kind of, uh, yeah, sex has not been fun, certainly not for the majority of women for a very long time. Um, I, I think men think it's fun. But that's because they don't realize what they're capable of. They um, have, have kind of done the short version of sex, the very fast version, the two-minute version, and not realizing that there are versions out there that, uh, yeah, once you do them, you don't even think about the two-minute version ever again. All right, so let's go over the sexualities. Abrosexual. Abrosexuality is described as an individual who experiences their sexuality change frequently. It can fluctuate between different sexualities often. And um, I'll just like tell you right now, the normal state for any human being and the normal state for most fourth dimensional creatures is that is there is a movement between sexualities depending upon uh, the circumstances. Uh, every, it's all about the circumstances. And that is the norm for the fourth dimension. And uh, fifth dimension is beyond even that. Um, you're all sexualities at once at all times and you choose which sexuality you want to experience at any given time in the fifth dimension whereas in the fourth dimension the circumstances kind of cause you to be in a certain um, set experience a certain sexuality or a change to a certain sexuality based on the circumstances that are around you uh, at any given time and place that's really because in the fourth dimension, the belief systems are that. That um, the sexuality, and that's what people are getting ready to go into. That people change whatever they're feeling sexu as far as being whatever sexuality they're in based on what's going on around them. Or something that's triggered in them from their childhood. Or, or, or. But it's something that is triggered a change that is triggered, that sexuality has changed, is triggered by something that's going on around them. That's fourth dimensional um, sexuality. Fifth dimensional um, sexuality is you know that you have access to all of them and you can you can use them any at any time, and you do. But it's your choice, it's not the other way around. You choose. Okay, so let's go on. Andro, androgynosexual. Androgynosexual describes a person who is sexually attracted to men and women, particularly of androgynous appearance. Androsexual. An androsexual is anyone who has sexual feelings towards masculinity. This term is usually used by genderqueer individuals who do not fall into heterosexuality or homosexuality. Okay? You probably will have to read that again or listen to that again. But there's probably a lot of these you'll have to do that with. Now, as you guys are listening to this, hopefully you're listening to this, hopefully you'll listen to all of it, I want you to try, especially my long-termers here, I want you to really try to put yourself into a non-judgmental meditative state and see where you really are 
if you really are heterosexual, always have been, and you've never moved, so be it. But I'm just letting you know that in the fifth dimension, there is no, no such thing. There is no, as a matter of fact, all of those terms go away in the fifth dimension. They're just, you just are. You are sexual is what you are. And however that plays out, however you choose to play that out in the fifth dimension is completely and perfectly fine. Uh, because in the fifth dimension, you would never do anything to hurt anyone. So anything that is sexual in this planet in the third dimension and even fourth dimension that causes sex and sexuality to harm in any way uh, another another person, another being, that would never ever happen. Those vibrations are way too low. They don't exist in the fifth dimension. So in the fifth dimension, your sexuality is played out exactly as you wish at any time and place. Okay? So Rob, uh, this is where, you know, after hearing all that stuff, and now hearing what I have to say, you listen at all that and kind of take the judgment away. You're 70, you shouldn't have that anyway. Certainly not about yourself. And kind of look at your life and how you feel. Kind of take stock about um, your life and how you felt over the years. And be open to these new vibrations. If you're planning on transitioning and going up to 5D, then, uh, yeah, you want to get a handle on these and see if you can start folding these into your life. And uh, that's that will be the best thing and the fastest thing. And it'll feel great, too. So, there you go. Okay. Aero romantic, a person who uh, is aero man a romantic a romantic, a person who is aromantic, does not experience romantic attraction. This person does not have to identify as asexual, and they still may experience sensual and aesthetic attraction. Okay? So what you're going to see is you're going to see all these bits and pieces that everybody has shoved into categories are going to come back and all these bits and pieces that have been shoved into two sides are going to be taken out and you can have this one, this one, this one, you can put it over here and you can do that. You can do this one, this one, or this one, or you can do this one by itself. That's what you're going to start seeing. And you're going to see that as these things come up, of course, sexuality is extremely complex. As these emotions and feelings and likes and dislikes come into play and you can play with them, then of course sexuality becomes very complex. Doesn't that make sense? Of course it makes sense. And if you didn't understand what I just said, rewind it. Listen to me say it again until it does make sense. Okay? Alright. Then we're going to go to asexual. Asexual is the term used to describe a person who feels little to no sexual attraction to anyone. And I don't want to hear anybody talk to me or anybody comment. I'll immediately um, get rid of the comment. If anybody says there's no such thing as fill in the blank, don't want to hear it. You want to argue about that, you need to go somewhere else, not on my side, okay? What y'all need to be on my side, if you're going to be on my side, um, I'm, not, I'm not much of a debate, debater. This is what I'm telling you, what my truth is. And like I've told you guys, if you don't like that truth, then you need to go find somewhere else to be. Because there are a lot of people talking about a lot of things. You can absolutely find someone that you will agree with, that will make sense, that will feel right to you. For whatever reason, it's not time for you to hear me if it makes you furious. And you don't want to be furious, and I don't want to hear you be furious or feel you be furious, so just go on to the next person. That's all. No harm, no foul. But for these, all these are very accurate, and there's way more to come. So um, be open to it, because it will be fun. It will be fun. 
Okay, now we're going to go into the bees. Uh, by romantic, a person who is romantically attracted to two sexes or genders. By romantic, asexual, seek romantic relationships for companionships, affection, and intimacy, but they are not sexually attracted to their romantic partners. Do you see? Do you see how many options there are? Now, Stephanie's age bracket, there's a lot of them that have had not had sex yet. Uh, Stephanie has not had sex yet. She's not been kissed yet because she falls within these other alternate categories, as do a lot of other beings. And since she has very little amnesia, she was not going to fall for the whole uh, heterosexual, you know, the whole rules about this is what you have to be, because she knew better. And she was more than willing to wait it out, and she has, and she will continue to until she finds that right person to match her rather complex um, and fluid movements through what is the norm and what will become the norm. Uh, bisexuality is bisexuals are sexually attracted to two or more genders. Uh, I don't know how to say this. It's C-E-T-E-R-O, cedarosexual. Someone who experiences sexual romantic attraction only to non-binary people. This label is used as a non-problematic term for scoliosexuality only to be used by non-binary people. Okay. Only to be used by non Great, more rules. Uh, no, everybody needs to use it and everybody needs to understand all of them. All of these terms. Demisexual. Demisexual refers to a person who doesn't experience sexual attraction unless they form an emotional connection. That's me. That's me. And as you guys know, I do not. I won't be moving around back and forth through a sexuality like um, a human would or one of the uh, sexuality as it's used in, in these terms and as it's used on this planet is used in a physical way and I don't do fix, uh, physical very much so yeah although I love physicality and I love sex I am definitely I don't move around through it as much as um, these young people will <laughs> I am definitely demisexual although it's first time I knew today was the only first time I knew I had a name for it I just knew that that was who I am. Okay, the next one, demi-romantic. This term is a type of gray romantic who only experiences romantic attraction after developing an emotional connection. Oh, well, I'd have to say I do that too. They do not experience primary romantic attraction, but are capable of secondary romantic attraction. Yeah, I'd have to say I'm, I'm in the demi category. I'm the two demis. <laughs> And I don't, although I move around in some of the other categories, I, I think I've been those probably my whole life. Okay, next is finsexual, the attraction to women, females, and femininity. Then we're going to G's, gay, a person who identifies as homosexual. Gynosexual, anyone who has sexual feelings towards a woman or femininity. The term can be useful when describing the sexual orientation of an individual with a non-binary gender identity. A gray romantic, um, a gray romantic is a person with romantic orientation that is somewhat between aromantic and romantic. Now H is heterosexual, homosexual, heteroromantic, romantically attracted to a member of the opposite sex, uh, homo, romantic, romantically, romantically attracted to someone of the same sex. Uh, these romantics, they may seek romantic intimacy, but not sexually attracted to same sex, sex partners. So they may have, be attracted to sex with opposite and romantic intimacy with same. And you know we've seen that. We have absolutely seen that. Lesbian, 
a homosexual woman whose emotional, romantic, and sexual feelings are towards women. Omnisexual, uh, attracted to all genders. Gender can still be a factor in their attraction, unlike pansexuals who don't care about gender. Pansexuals, pansexuality is the attraction of all genders. They are often described as being gender blind. They can be attracted to all genders, such as male, female, transgender, androgynous, etc. Panromantic is a person that can be romantically attracted to all genders, but not sexually. Uh, homosexuality refers to non-orientation, in which people disregard sexuality labels altogether. Basically, labels are seen as superficial and insignificant, to someone who identifies as homosexual. Polysexual is the, is the attract to some but not all genders. They may be attracted to any combination of possible genders, including binary and non-binary. Queer, in LGBTQ plus term, the community is reclaiming an identity label that is non-specific about a person's sexual orientation, which is the way it started a long, long time ago. Um, and it changed and confused me. Uh, questioning, to be unsure or of re-examining one's previous assumption of sexual orientation. And that is where you are, sir. You are in questioning. Uh, straight, you know what that is. Scoliosexual is the attraction to non-binary individuals. Sapiosexual is sexually attracted to intelligence or the human mind. Is that it? Okay, well, hold on, let me see if that ends in S. And there we have it, our 29 sexualities that we're aware of. Okay. So, guys, there you go. I wanted you to know, look at all the genders. I wanted you to know all of those sexualities. I want, um, I want, uh, Rob, I want you to know that it is understandable that you've been confused your whole life because of you are a star seed. Uh, you have not been here very many times. And so it's confusing anyway for it to be all split up like that. So, and to be told that those feelings go over here when they don't, or that you don't have them at all. And now you're living when they're all coming back. So if it wasn't confusing enough about you know, the 70 years that you've been here, you're here long enough that it's screamingly going back the other direction. And they're going to be adding um, these combinations and coming up with new names about as fast as they can. Uh, your, your job, be open to it. Uh, find out what makes you, uh, feels right to you. And be open and ready to change. Uh, at a split second notice because ultimately that's the way it really it will be in 4d is uh, Yeah, even hardcore heterosexuals. Uh, that's that's not the norm. Nobody being anything Hardcore is the norm. It never was uh, it Never will be they could play like it is but it never was and it never will be and you can head towards fourth dimension. For all of you who want to play in the fourth dimension, uh, this is something that you should start getting the hang of. Those who can't stomach the thought of it and you can only deal with heterosexual, then plan on um, jumping over to another planet that's going to be in the third dimension or, and or second dimension, third or second, third or second. Um, are in those categories. All right. Well, I know that was a lot of reading and not that much talking, but I really wanted you to know, I wanted you to hear it from me, all of those things and how much, uh, how much they're coming back. Cause I wanted you to remember that I laughed. If you'll go back to that video, I laughed and I said, they, you have no idea. And this is the beginning of what I was talking about. 
All right? Okay, guys, that's it for me. I love you so much, and I'll talk to you later. Huge hugs now. Bye.